Hi everyone, I'm Handika Ramadan from the Department of Physics, School of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, University of Indonesia. And welcome to this massive online open courses or MOOCs on Mathematical Methods in Physics. This MOOC is made available to you by the University of Indonesia. In this five-week series, we are going to discuss Ordinary Differential Equation or ODE and Calculus of Variations, as well as some of their applications in physics. In these five-week courses, we are going to discuss about differential equations in nature, first-order ODE, separations of variables and integrating factor techniques, second-order ODE, oscillation, introduction to calculus of variation, Fermat's principle of least time, Euler's equations, and Brachistochron. Unfortunately, this MOOC's duration does not permit us to discuss each topic in great length. But I hope that these introductory courses can at least give you a glimpse of the beauty and importance of some mathematical methods to solve physical problems in nature as well as in industries. By the end of this series, for you who are already physics or engineering students, I hope you can appreciate these tools studied here as one of your main weapons in physics, the other being the numerical methods. While for those of you who are still high school students, I hope that this series will trigger your curiosity to take physics as your college major. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Handika Ramadan. I'm a physicist and a lecturer at the Department of Physics, School of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, University of Indonesia. I am the head of theoretical nuclear particle physics and astrophysics research group in our department. My research interests include topological defects in cosmology, general relativity and gravitation, black holes, and compact objects in astrophysics. I've been teaching mathematical methods in physics for undergraduates since 2014. The textbooks we are going to use heavily in these courses are Mathematical Methods in the Physical Sciences by Mary L. Boss, Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering by Riley, Hobson, and Benz, and Mathematical Methods for Physicists by Arfgen, Weber, and Harris. In this first series, we shall begin by exploring the use of differential equations in nature. It is a well-known fact that differential equation is ubiquitous in physics. It appears in every physical phenomenon. It can appear as an equation of motion for a swinging pendulum in Newtonian mechanics, behavior of hydrogen atom in quantum mechanics, or expansion of the universe in, in cosmology. From simple objects like an electron to one of the most complicated systems like weather, their behavior can be spoken in terms of differential equations. In fact, it even transcends physics. It is the natural language to describe, among other things, the spread of disease in epidemiology, the behavior of stocks in financial market, the dynamics of predators and prey in population biology, or the rise and fall of states in history. Professor Leonard Susskind, one of the prominent theoretical physicists at Stanford University, said that physics always has to do with differential equations. In general, differential equation is an equation that relates a function and their derivatives. A solution of differential equation is a function that, when inserted back into the differential equation, it gives an identity. Differential equation can be classified with respect to its number of independent variables. It can be ordinary differential equation or ODE or partial differential equation or PDE. But it can also be classified with, with respect to its degrees of derivatives. It can be first order or higher order. And lastly, it can be classified with respect to its linearity. It can be linear differential equation or nonlinear differential equations. For example, differential equation number one is an example of a linear second order ODE. Differential equation number two is a linear first order PDE. Well, differential equation number three is an example of a nonlinear second order ODE. In a linear differential equation, the principle of superposition holds. That is, if y1 is a solution to the differential equation and y2 is also another solution to the same differential equation, then 
The superposition of them is also a solution. In fact, we can write that the most general solution must be a linear superposition of all particular solutions. In this series, we focus our discussion only on the linear ODE. Further, we only limit the ODE only up to second order. It is unfortunate or fortunate, depends on whether you perceive it from pessimistic or optimistic point of view, that almost all phenomena in nature are non-linear. Take for example weather. Its dynamics is so non-linear that the famous butterfly effect applies there. Every solution of differential equation comes with integration constants. Solutions that contain integration constants are called general solutions. An nth order of ODE gives n integration constants. To fix the integration constant, we need initial or boundary conditions. A general solution whose constants have been fixed by the initial or boundary conditions is called a unique solution. To have a unique solution, an nth order ODE must be supplemented by an n number of initial or boundary conditions. This is the end of week one. Now I have a quiz for you as an exercise and see you next week.